I, I, I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving Tesla Nicole had just turned three years old when her battered body was found in a shallow grave near Sweet Home, Oregon, with abrasions on her ankles and wrists from being bound, marks from electric shocks, and trauma from sexual violence. This case is considered to be one of the worst cases of child abuse in Oregon's history. It is right up there with the baby Brianna case, although it is not discussed as much. I need to give you a strong warning on this one. It is a very disturbing case that involves every kind of abuse imaginable, so viewer discretion is advised. It is one of the most horrible cases I have ever researched. This case was a very hard one for me, but my thought is if this little child was forced to endure this, I could research it. And hopefully, we as a society can learn something to protect our innocent children by discussing the brutal murder of this beautiful little girl. First, before we begin, welcome to the murder she shed. You have found the place where we discuss rarely heard true crime cases right from my she shed. And my name is Holly. And Simon is in the house. Or actually, I think he's on the front porch right now. So, you might not see him this episode. I'm not sure. Simon is my German Shepherd if you're new, and he usually appears every video. Also, I got my new mic stand, and it is working perfectly. You don't see my mic anymore. It's up above, and Simon can't knock it over. So, plus, plus, win, win. Win, win, chicken den. I don't know. I think it's winner, winner, chicken dinner, but I just shorten it. That's okay. Anyway, hit that like and subscribe button so we can get the victims that are rarely heard about into the YouTube algorithms. Stella Kaiser was a victim of abuse as a child, and her father had committed suicide in her early teen years. A few years after her dad had passed away, she met a man named Jason O'Call while attending drug parties in Ontario, California. They began a relationship, and by the time Stella was 16, she became pregnant with her first child, a little baby boy who was named after his father, Jason. Two years later, on June 8, 1994, she gave birth to Teslin, who weighed 6 pounds and 12 ounces at birth. Unmarried, she and Jason, the two kids, lived with his mom in a mobile home. Jason did odd jobs as a carpenter, and they saved welfare income enough to move into a duplex. Stella was very selfish and immature for rage. She enjoyed provoking Jason, so he would fight other men for her. She was described as being so foul-mouthed, you couldn't hold a conversation with her. Two years later, Stella and Jason's relationship would end, and she would move back to Oregon. After the children moved back to Oregon with their mom, Jason would send her money every month. In September 1996, Stella renewed a bond with her twin brother, Billy, and made an effort to shape up her life by taking a parenting class. That Christmas, when the children came to California to spend time with their dad and his family, Stella told them she couldn't handle the boy anymore, and while she was there would often yank on little Jason and push him, spank him, slap him. So Dad, Jason, and his family decided it was best to keep little Jason with them. Stella did take Tesla back to Oregon with her, but they said she never showed any tendencies of being abusive towards Tesla. Little Jason would have nightmares when he first moved back in with his dad and his family and would wake up talking about monsters. In January 1997, Stella, now 21, met her new boyfriend, Jesse Compton, in Oregon through the drug scene. Not a good idea to get with this man. He is pure evil. The next month, her and now two-and-a-half-year-old Tesla moved in with him. Their shared habit of meth abuse bred violence as they would go for days without sleeping or eating and become dangerously irritable and paranoid before crashing to sleep for days. Compton hosted drug parties at his apartment, some of which went on for several days. He prepared meth for smoking by melting it with a small propane torch. On at least one occasion, Compton held the lighted torch close to his hand to show his friends that he could withstand a great deal of pain. Before Compton had met Stella, he had lost custody of his daughter. He had abused his then-living girlfriend and his two-year-old daughter. So it didn't take long before he started beating on Stella and Teslin. 
Soon after Stella and Tesla moved in with Compton, he began abusing Tesla. He hit her on her buttocks and back with a wooden spoon, a spatula, and a belt. Individuals who came to the drug parties at the couple's apartment witnessed Compton slap Tesla in the face, drag her by her hair, force her to stand in the corner for long periods of time, and make her take long, cold baths or showers. He was frequently angry with Tesla and called her disparaging names. The visitors also observed that Compton and Stella usually kept Tesla in the bedroom during the drug parties. Remember, it was days at a time they would have drug parties. Guys, this is a horrible case. Can you imagine that little girl, these people on meth, didn't sleep day or night? And she could hear them at all times. You haven't even heard, oh, it gets so bad. I'm, I'm still warning you on this one. When she was kept in that bedroom, Compton would often visit her in there. He would go in there, shut the door, high on meth, and after he got done, she could be heard screaming and crying for hours afterwards. He would then not permit others to go into the bedroom to help her. This baby would be crying for hours, and what he was doing to her in that room was pure torture, yet people were too scared of Compton to check on that baby. Eventually, Compton and Stella kept Tesla in the bedroom most of the time. When a neighbor complained about the way that Compton treated Tesla, Compton told him that he would kill the neighbor and the neighbor's girlfriend if they called the police. I would have called anyway. I can't imagine hearing that baby scream for hours and no one doing anything. It makes me really worry about society. It's just so disturbing. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't live by her and hear her screaming through those thin apartment walls and sit there and do nothing. How do you go on about your life if you hear a baby screaming like that? I just can't imagine it. Compton began immobilizing Tesla by placing her hands and feet over her head and tying them together with ropes, cords, or strips of cloth. He left her tied up for 8 to 10 hours at a time. Can you imagine the pain she endured having to stay in that position for so long? And we all know, without discussing it, part of why she was placed in this position. The aggression and hypersexual activity that meth causes puts children at a high risk of physical and sexual abuse. Meth is absolutely the worst drug in terms of child safety. While on these drug-fueled rages, he would forcefully penetrate her with objects and inflict burns on Tesla's back, buttocks, and genital areas using an open flame. Some of those burns became infected and Compton would then pour rubbing alcohol into them. So her front area was so burnt that part of it was actually burnt off. I hate to get that graphic. Guys, sometimes we need to hear this stuff to learn what happens to these children that are in these houses like this. Maybe it'll make us come forward next time. He also inflicted round burns on her legs. Neighbors reported that the couple would dangle Tesla from the balcony, pour beer down her throat as a big joke, and that Compton, who would often throw knives at the wall, also threw a knife at Tesla, missing her head by inches. When Tesla's grandma visited, the two-year-old told her that she wanted to live somewhere else. The family became suspicious, but Stella Erratic cut them off. Grandma said that Tesla herself had cut patches out of her hair. When the family complained to the police, the cops made a visit and they saw no signs of abuse, but they were actually not able to enter the residence. They just seen Tesla through one of the windows and waved to her, and she waved back, so officers assumed she was fine. Approximately two months before Tesla's death, Compton broke four vertebrae in her back from basically just jumping on her. Tesla was always dirty and not fed correctly. Sometime within 24 hours before she died, Compton struck Tesla in the head many times, which caused her brain to bruise. Internal injuries were also caused due to her abdomen having been stomped on. Tesla was also abused with a fork that was scraped on her body, causing scratches and bruises on her abdomen and little punch holes in her stomach. Stella's mom took a cake to the apartment for her third birthday on June 8th. Stella turned her away, saying that Tesla was sick. When her grandma hugged her, the child clung to her. Five days after Tesla's third birthday, Compton found Tesla dead between 12 a.m. and 2 a.m. 
He immediately untied her and tried to revive her by performing CPR, hitting her chest, trying to shock her with an electric cord, and pouring cold water on her. Jesse was not able to revive her, so he and Stella left her in the room so they could figure out what to do. Both adults knew that with the injuries that were present on her body, they would go to jail. It was decided at some point they would bury Teslin and her aunt would help them do it. They put her little body in a laundry basket and covered it in order to get her to the vehicle to be able to bury her. Then they took her out to the woods in Sweet Home or near Sweet Home, Oregon and buried her little body in a shallow grave. The day after the couple buried Tesla and they seemed happy, playful, and affectionate with each other. When friends asked about her, they would say she was with the babysitter or at her aunt's home. They told friends they were planning to move out of town and wish to have a baby boy. Two days after Tesla was buried, her aunt decided to go to the police with a little encouragement from her boyfriend. On the evening of June 16th, 1997, Compton's sister told the Springfield Police Department that she had helped Compton and Stella bury Teslin's body in the Sweet Home, Oregon area two days earlier. Teslin's battered body was found in a shallow grave in some woods. She was bound, shocked, and sexually assaulted. In her grave, they also found, among other things, a piece of cloth that appeared to be torn from a curtain, a strip of gray cloth, a blue braided belt, and a woman's ring with a pink stone in it. That afternoon, police officers went to Compton's apartment. They advised Compton of his Miranda rights and obtained his permission to enter the apartment. Most of the apartment was dirty and smelled bad. There were holes in the walls, which Compton had made by punching the walls when he was angry or by throwing the knives. The police found drug paraphernalia, drug residue, and a propane torch. They also found a lamp with a cut cord, a pair of pliers with burn residue on it, rubbing alcohol bottles and white cloths with knots in them. In a search of the dumpster near Compton's apartment, the police found two trash bags from his apartment that contained a Mother's Day card for Stella, a handwritten card from this baby to her mother, a mother that allowed these things to happen to her, a mother that kept her in a home where she was tied up in the most horrible way and abused terribly. She made her mother a Mother's Day card. That is just tear jerking. That is horrible. They also found child's clothing and electric cord that had been cut and had a frayed end. A blue cloth, a white cloth, and a shoestring with knots in them and a rope. The cloth and shoestring had hair mixed in with the knots. It was Teslin's hair. Some of the cloth that the police found was similar to cloth that had been found in the child's grave. The medical examiner who conducted the autopsy concluded that Teslin had died of shock and he listed the cause of death as battered child syndrome. She had so many injuries on her little body that they just decided to list it as shock. Compton was indicted on six counts of aggravated murder, murder by abuse, first degree sexual penetration, and second degree abuse of a corpse. The jury convicted him of all counts, and he was sentenced to death. Stella Kaiser was found guilty of aggravated murder and sentenced to life without possibility of parole. I personally believe these monsters deserve hell after what they did to this little girl. They should have just been transported straight to hell. No stops in between. No prison. Just straight hell. They're horrible, horrible monsters. They must be demons and they definitely belong in hell. Teslin was described as a little girl who loved animals, especially her grandfather's horses, when she visited him in California. She loved music. She wasn't really into dolls. She was more of a tomboy and loved to play with toy trucks. And you can see she was a beautiful little girl that loved life. And that was taken way too soon. She could have grown up to be a vet, musician, or a race car driver. But that we will never know due to two evil monsters. All right, guys, I told y'all this was a tough one to get through. Well, I hope you're having a great weekend. Thanks for your support. You guys are literally the best subscribers in all of the subscriber world. The best of the best. I love y'all. Bye. Look at my head, I'm seeing. Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving. I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving. I could take this crap from seeing to believing. Got a taste for blood in my tongue.
keeps bleeding from the words I spit. So sharp, so freezing, so cold. The whole frostbite they feeling. I could tear you apart, or I could go.